Welcome to WonderPod. WonderPod is the official podcast of Wonderfest, Ireland's first online children's book festival. I'm your host, Connor Brayden. In this podcast, we'll be discussing everything there is to talk about with children's books. I'll be talking with Ireland's top writers, illustrators, publishers, agents, and more. You can find out more about Wonderfest by heading to wonderfest.ie. Now, on with the show. Hello there, and welcome to the Finn Alley of this year's WonderPod, the official podcast of Wonderfest. In today's episode, I will be talking with two members of the Wonderfest team, Ashwin Chaco and Sarah Webb. Ashwin Chaco is an artist, illustrator, writer and motivational speaker. He's a seriously playful connector, bringing people together through positive storytelling with illustration and design, and he's based in Dublin, Ireland. He uses bold lines and shapes intermingled with typography and patterns. He really likes to describe his work as positively playful, and I, for one, absolutely have to agree. Sarah Webb is, well, the founder of Wonderfest and an award-winning children's author, teacher, and champion of children's books in general. Her children's books include A Sailor Went to CCC, illustrated by Steve McCarthy, which won the Irish Book Awards Junior category, and Blazing a Trail, Irish Women Who Changed the World, illustrated by Lauren O'Neill, which won the Irish Book Awards Senior category. <laughs> Her latest book, The Little Bee Charmer of Henrietta Street, was published by the O'Brien Press in September this year. Honestly, I don't feel like I need to do too much more introduction for this episode because genuinely everything you need to know was right there in the interview itself. So, without further ado, may I present Ashwin and Sarah. Hello guys and thanks so much for coming to the final episode of WonderPod, the official uh, podcast of Wonderfest, but I don't have to tell Sarah or Ashwin this because they know all about WonderPod. Um, so I have Sarah Webb and Ashwin Chaco. Thanks to both of you for coming on for the final episode, especially now we're in the final week and things are really crunch time. So uh, thanks for squeezing, squeezing me in. How are you both doing? Good, thank you. Thank you for having us, Connor. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's Not great to be here. It's great to have you. Um, so I'd like to start then with um, just maybe introduce yourselves to everybody. Um, so uh, Sarah, why don't you start us off? Could you introduce yourself to the to the listeners and explain how you kind of got started with children's books and children's literature? Sure. Um, so my name is Sarah Webb. Um, I am involved with the Wonderfest Festival, which I know we're going to be talking about the genesis of and... Uh, some of the events in a few minutes. Um, I am a children's writer. I teach creative writing to children and to grown-ups. I review children's books with the Irish Independent and I have some other jobs I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I have lots of different <laughs> jobs but they're all to do with children's books and programming and festivals and reviewing. Um, I'm oh, sure it will come yes. to me, Connor. I'm sure it will come to me. <laughs> it will. Just if you think of <laughs> oh, all, I, I know what it is. I know what it is. I work in a bookshop on Saturdays. I there work you. in a children's bookshop. Yeah. There you go. That's enough. Yeah, that's that's plenty. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Ashwin, could you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do? So, hey, everybody. My name is Ashwin Chaco, and I'm a positively playful visual storyteller. And I use the medium of illustration and design to tell those stories. I'm also an author and a motivational speaker. See, that's far more polished and concise than my garbled kind of. <laughs> well, I practice funny. these things. <laughs> yeah. I need to practice. Clearly, I need more practice. <laughs> that's that's what this way we have the off the cuff which can have its you know unique charm and then we have the polished and practice which also has a stiff you know we're, we're both sides. thank you connor thank you i'm here to save you and make you look good sarah don't worry <laughs> <laughs> um so ashwin why don't i start with yourself um how, how did you get started with illustration and design and storytelling like was it something you were always kind of intrigued in as a younger person or is it something that you kind of fell into as you became an adult so as far back as I can remember, I always loved drawing. I, I remember the story that my mom retells me of 
uh, me at the age of five or six. And uh, I asked her, can I make drawing a living? Of course, at the, at the time, she just shrugged her shoulders and she was like, we'll see. Um, but today, 23 years, uh, two countries and three kids later, I can probably say I draw for a living. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's so I, I like originally started in graphic design, um, working in advertising. Um, I studied animation, worked in graphic design. And then when I came to Ireland, I realized that I could make illustration a full-time job. So that was what I pursued. And over the last three years, I've made that transition. That's interesting. So, so do you think that being in Ireland has made the dream of being a full-time illustrator more achievable or and if so what was it about the other countries that you've been in that made it harder yeah it's uh definitely made it possible being here um the opportunities that are available the access to the uk europe market as well as america is much more recognized um india is still just in its inception as far as the illustration agents illustration industry goes it, it, for the most part it's still considered in the arts field and there isn't as much um, credibility given to the industry and so um, you can do it you're just not going to get paid well enough to make a living on it so that graphic design was a way for me to circumvent that and sneak in illustration into my work yeah yeah no I get you because the graphic design was a more of a, a a financial choice really and then it was like you're still kind of honing your craft and drawing and everything um that's mad I never would have thought of Ireland as being a, a hub like that but you're right aren't you because we do have you know even though it's quite a distance away there's the foot in the door in the American market and then of course the Irish market is very interlinked with the UK market and then by proxy the European so that's it's an interesting take that I didn't consider <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, Sarah, what about you? How did uh, how did you get started in kids books and um, what was it that kind of got your foot in the door? Well, I studied English and history of art in college and I always knew I wanted to work with books. Um, I first of all thought about publishing, but in Ireland in the mid 1990s, uh, there was a recession and there was very little work going in publishers. So I did apply to them all, but one of them actually said, well, try the bookshops. It's a great place to start. So I did. And I started in Hunter's Vegas, and then I moved to Hughes and Hughes. I worked in Waterstones and I worked in Easton's for many years as the children's buyer and marketing manager. It was actually in Waterstones that I started. Um, sorry, that's my dog. If you, if you hear funny noises behind me, that's my dog making funny noises. Um, uh, yeah, while in Waterstones, I took over the children's department and I didn't look back. I loved it. And I was there for many, many years and I did loads of brilliant events um, with all kinds of of authors and I got to meet my dear friend Marita Connor McKenna one of the first events I did I met Judy Bloom I met an amazing woman called Paula Danzinger all kinds of people JK Rowling yeah amazing um, and after working more stands I moved to Easton's as the buyer and uh, marketing manager for children's books and then I left uh, to write full-time uh, but pretty quickly realized I wasn't very good sitting in my own house five days a week writing. <laughs> uh, so then I went back <laughs> and worked as a consultant for the very books um, and then started doing a lot of festival work and all kinds of other work. So I did actually work full time as a writer for maybe two years, but it really did bore me quite a lot being with myself all that time. So, um, and I started writing books when I was in Waterstones. My first book was called Kids Can Cook. And it was literally because I'd spotted a gap in the market for a children's cookery book with Irish recipes in it. Um, and so I wrote one. And uh, now this year I wrote my 40th children's book. Well, my 40th book, um, I think I did about 15 adult books along the way as well. A lot of um, novels and uh, yeah, all novels. And then children's books, I've done nonfiction, fiction, collections, all kinds of things. So mm -hmm. yeah. A very varied career. And I think 
I think you are a good um, example for aspiring writers in the country to, to follow because you're not just an author. Like you, you create opportunities both for yourself and for other authors through the likes of Wonderfest and through other things. And I, and I think, and even Ashwin, you had said it, you're not just an illustrator, you're a motivational speaker and you're a graphic design, lots of things. It, you do need to supplement your career for kind of two reasons. One, to financially support yourself, but two, to like not go stir crazy sitting on yeah. your own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know it is a funny old job. And I am a people's person. I like people. I like working with people. Uh, people interest me. I find them inspiring. And I get lots of ideas from working with other people. Um, so, yeah, so absolutely. And things like the Wonderfest project, especially over the last two years, has been a wonderful way of keeping in touch with a group of writers and inspiring writers. And, mm. um, and one of the reasons we set it up uh, last September, 2020 um, was kind of that first of all to promote and celebrate Irish children's books but also to come together as a community and support other children's writers um, because we trained a lot of children's writers on how to um, do online events which was really interesting um, along of course with the wonderful children's books Ireland and Poetry Ireland who did some wonderful training but we were kind of there at the beginning of online events for children which was a really interesting place to be yeah no it is and, and um that's one thing i think i really like about wonderfest myself is the online aspect actually makes it so much more accessible um mm. because if if uh, well i can't speak for you sarah but i can imagine that if uh, the idea for making a new festival cropped up in your head before covid it would have been in person then it would have been in like a particular theater or somewhere yeah. in Dublin or something and it would have been fantastic I have no doubt but because <laughs> Wonderfest is online it's so much more accessible to the entire country and to all the families and schools and aspiring illustrators and authors out there but before yeah. we get too much into that um uh Ashton, I'll ask you this and then I'll come to Sarah to tell us how it started could you maybe just suppose summarize uh, Wonderfest, Wonderfest in general, is what it is really and who it's the... for quintessential place for anybody interested in children's books and there's three different facets that Wonderfest touches on it 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 works with families so there's events that really enhance um, children's books for kids and and exposes them to new books um, the second is for um, schools and teachers and so that's really working with um, existing schools that are out there that need access to authors and writers that they no won't normally get and really expose young kids to the fact that this is a potential career for them as well. And then the third is uh, aspiring illustrators and writers. And so this is a fantastic event for them. They get access to brilliant authors and illustrators they get to ask them questions they get to learn and uh, potentially even get a kickstart in their career um, it, because they get to meet publishers they'll know them by name and you know send them a cheeky email later <laughs> which I have done I, I will put my hands up I'll put both my hands up and say I have done I've been like, hey, you might remember me from Wonderfest. Uh, <laughs> that's that's the whole point, isn't it? It's about creating those opportunities for everyone across the spectrum. Um, so, Sarah, why don't I come to you now as the uh, as the the progenitor of Wonderfest, as the creator? <laughs> um, what could you tell us the? Because uh, I know the story because I've heard it from yourself, but our listeners haven't. Sure. Could you tell us the story of how Wonderfest started? What it was? What was the idea? And how did it become a proper full on festival? Sure. Um, so Children's Books Ireland, um, since last autumn, have been holding their virtual copy mornings, which is a place where artists, um, illustrators and children's writers come together to hear about a topic and also to chat afterwards. And um, after one of these, a big gang of children's writers and illustrators were on the call and we were talking about how we could help support and promote books that were coming out that year in 2020 because the festivals were gone 
um, you know, the bookshops were closed at that time. Um, it was just a really difficult, there were no launches, especially difficult for debut writers who were launching a book really into a great nothingness, you know. So we thought, well, I'm a, I'm a very positive person. If you show me a problem, I'll try and solve it. So I kind of said, well, let's do something that could be on for trying to create an online book festival. <laughs> 11 very brave individuals put up their hands including Trish Ford and Mary Murphy and Alan O'Rourke and Alan Nolan and Eve McDonnell who's been incredible behind the scenes she is really what I'd call the producer she does all the spreadsheets and the accounts and the admin and we all said right we we'll give this a go so <laughs> we met um on zoom which is a, a platform we've become very very uh, knowledgeable knowledgeable about Us over, and over everybody the period. else in the world after exactly, uh, exactly. yeah and we just started talking about what we could do and we had really great skills I mean uh, Trish Ford um, was involved with setting up of Babaro uh, the children's arts festival in Galway a lot of us had programming experience um, Alan O'Rourke had website experience, so he was able to set up a website. Eve has extraordinary admin um, uh, capabilities. So, you know, we just all came together and then we talked about the kind of events we might like to put on. And then we just got cracking and we turned it over in a really, really short amount of time. And the Pavilion Theatre came on board um, to help with um, the funding so they funded the um, speaker's fees which was extraordinary but they also gave us the backup in that they set up the booking for us so each of the events could be booked through the pavilion and that was a huge piece of work and poor Hugh who's the director of the pavilion he rang me on a zoom call and just said Sarah we're going to give you um, the funding to pay the speakers and the poor man I started crying <laughs> <laughs> just very overwhelmed and uh, so but it was lovely and um, so they've been really really supportive as have the Arts Council and um, Children's Books Ireland have been terrific and this year the Leary Libraries DLR um, libraries have come on board to help as well um, with some support so yeah so it was very much a team effort so those kind of 12 kind of um uh, authors and illustrators who kind of started it all off last year worked terrifically hard everyone worked so hard and I think that is why it works so well in that there's there's now a bigger team I think there's 15 now mm. uh, including yourself Connor and then there's some volunteers as well so it's a big team and everyone pulls together and everyone kind of um, does what they can to support the festival to promote you're doing podcasts you know we have lovely Sinead O'Hart who runs the um, email like everyone does something really important and it's lovely everyone kind of works together as a team which is really nice mm. I think that's one thing that I've taken away from Wonderfest and being involved and I'm sure Ashwin will agree that the the sense of that we are a team and also the sense of like that children's the children's publishing industry in Ireland in particular is very much a community and people mm -hmm you know, celebrate each other's books and successes and, you know, um, promote each other as much as they promote themselves and everything. And I think that's one thing that Wonderfest is really special, that everyone's uh, everyone's cheering it on and everyone's working really yeah. hard behind the scenes. Um, so Ashwin, at what point, I know, I know how it happened to me and I'll share that too, but um, <laughs> at what point were you... Um, I think roped it was uh, into, early on <laughs> happily, in 2020, sure, into, uh, uh, the Wonderfest probably team. just after Sarah had the inception of the idea and they, they were moving forward with um, the Wonderfest. She wrote me an email. I think she got connected with me via Mags, um, who's also an amazing illustrator. And uh, she just wrote to me and said, hey, would you be interested in being a part of the festival? We'd love to have you do a workshop but also would love to have you on the team and I was like that would be amazing I'd love to be a part of this <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the way I got involved I may as well say is that uh, I had had uh, Sarah on my other podcast story of a story <laughs> guest and um, then 
I think Sarah, you retweeted uh, a tweet from the Wonderfest account, and I was like, "Oh, cool!" And it said, "If there's any teachers uh, willing to learn more about this, whatever." And I, I sent a DM saying, "Oh, yeah, I'm a teacher," and I got a big lengthy reply. I said, "Oh, great! This is wonderful." And here's what we're doing. And, we're to do do. <laughs> and then, oh, Connor, it's me, Sarah, by the way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, the last year it was just I, I was just a volunteer and I gave a hand with the, the admin side and the background during the events. Um, and then Sarah, you came along and was like, hey, Connor, do you want to do another podcast? <laughs> and here we are. Um, so there's, a, there's a word that's used a lot amongst the uh, Wonderfest crew, and that's voluntold. Um, <laughs> and I will say, Sarah, you have many skills, but I don't think you realize how strong your voluntelling is. <laughs> I am not ashamed it takes of a and No, don't be. Don't be. Trolling. Exactly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it does, yeah. <laughs> I call it excellent team building. <laughs> That's, I, shall, I, shall, uh, I shall call it that from now on. And Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so, Ashwin, maybe you could tell us um, what has for you been the most enjoyable thing about being involved. I think the big, in Wonderfest the biggest part and, for me about um, Wonderfest is you know, the what, community you've really it. gotten out of it. Uh, especially being fairly new to Ireland, I've only been here five years, but I've still, I'm still new to the creative industry. I'm pushing into it, and this was a fantastic opportunity to meet all these other really creative people, um, illustrators, authors, publishers. And, you know, celebrate each other, celebrate each other's work and the type of stuff. Um, I mean, the thing is, for me, the greatest asset that anybody can have is the relationships you have, because lots of things change in life. You know, your countries might change, your job might change, but those relationships are what sustain you. And so walking away from Wonderfest with the whole new set of friends is uh, probably the best takeaway you could get. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and Sarah, what's something then about Wonderfest that you wish everybody outside of the committee knew? Like, if, like what's something you just wish that everyone who's going to one or two events or listening to this podcast knew about the festival and um, something, something you'd like everyone to know, I guess. Hmm. What would I like everyone to know? Well, I guess I would like people to know that it is a festival built with love and built on enthusiasm and passion for children's books and very much for Irish children's books. But that's kind of a broad church, you know, that includes uh authors and illustrators living in Ireland like Ashwin um those like Paddy Donnelly who is currently living in Brussels who is very much part of the community and is on the Wonderfest team so it kind of includes lots of different people but the thing we all have in common is that we're crazy about children's books and we really want to pass that love on to other people you know to families to teachers to people who want to write um for children. I also think we take children's books quite seriously and we know how important getting good books into children's hands is and I know Connor as a teacher you'd know that as well um, and we take the craft and the art of writing and illustrating for children quite seriously as well so the proper book events that we're running with Children's Books Ireland um, for example um, they have kind of agents there's Emma Byrne, who's the art director in uh, O'Brien, and the Shane Hegarty, uh, Tricilla Cruz, Ashwin is, is speaking on one of those. But they are kind of evenings where we talk about the business side of children's books and getting into children's illustration and writing. Um, and they're really, really interesting ones, I think, for people who are interested in writing or illustrating for children. And then another theme this year is creativity. So we are all really interested in how creativity and how writing, reading and creating art can help children, especially at the moment. You know, we've been through an extraordinary 18 months. And I think it's only in the next period of time, the next kind of year or two years, we'll kind of realise what 
effect that has had on our children and young people. And I believe creativity has a huge role to play in helping children and adults come to term with what's happened and kind of move forwards, you know, examine it and move forward. So yeah, so there are a few things I hope people, I would like people to know. Excellent. Um, you touched on something there. I, I, I have seen a lot about the effect that COVID-19 and the pandemic and more let, less, less so COVID itself and more the lockdowns mm. have had. And I totally agree with them having happened and keeping people safe and everything like that before somebody thinks <laughs> against safety. But uh, the one thing is I've seen the huge effect it has had on children um, yeah. negatively, definitely. Um, there's children that are more anxious um, from mm. the academic side, children who have become, uh, who have, you know there's a gap now in their in the time that they've had in school and they're learning yeah but also for some kids I have seen it was actually quite positive to get that big solid break away from school and a chance mm. to grow and mature and to develop new talents and skills like there was um, a child I, I taught um, in third class he's now in sixth and in third class every time I said just because you said creativity I thought of him Sarah every mm. time I said okay guys it's Thursday we're going to do art and most kids like, oh yes, and I, you know, we'd start taking out <laughs> and everything. And this boy, every time, would start crying, oh. um, because he found art incredibly stressful because he felt, oh, I'm not good enough, and I can't yeah. think of anything. And he had this um, mental block that he just couldn't overcome. Mm. And then he, then when he came back uh, the next year, then after the lockdown, um, he gave me a picture that he drew of a Pokemon, oh. and now. That, although I wouldn't say he's the world's most amazing artist and he he is indeed he knows that but he now enjoys it and he now gives it a go and he gets into it so yeah you know, it, it's you're right though um the, the the last 18 months have been tough on a lot of people and that's one reason I really love Wonderfest myself is that it lets people you know focus on something bright and cheerful and creative mm. and positive and uh it's just great <laughs> <laughs> Um, so speaking of the festival itself, um, what particular events are you guys really looking forward to later this week? Wow. Well, I guess we have to start with Ashwin's event on <laughs> Wednesday. So his is a school event at 10 in the morning with Sheena Dempsey. And Ashwin's going to be doing an animal draw along with Sheena. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, I believe that's, he's going to take uh, that's what makes it fun, you know? from the children. To- is that right, Ashwin? Create the animal if necessary. <laughs> Brave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it might be a jellyfish dog or something. Yeah, a mashup animal. Um, so that's one I'm really looking forward to on the children's um, school side. And um, uh, we also have the amazing Owen Coffer on Friday school's event at 12 midday and he's in conversation with Trish Ford another of the Wonderfest team and they are great friends um, Owen was a teacher a primary school teacher in a former life and uh, so was Trish and they do love kind of uh, talking about school and about creativity but I think that's just going to be really really good fun and then on the family event side oh, there's loads of things we have um, Derek Landy great favorite of mine with his friend Dave O'Callaghan and that's going to be very funny and we have lovely Judy Curtin who is talking with her editor Helen Carr about how books are created and I think for children who are really booky and who really like books and reading and writing and creating their own work I think that might be well, a really interesting. You can't go wrong with um, Oliver what about Jeffers, you, Ashley, you he's having his to? event on Friday you know the mind at play um, and then um, Chris Horton's <laughs> doing stories uh, yeah. as well. That's and true. And then like yeah. there's the master yeah. classes on yeah, Sunday, which I think are going to be studies. brilliant for anybody yeah. interested in getting into the, the world of children's book writing or illustrating for them. So there's some fantastic writers um, yeah. like Eve, who's, who's, who's teaching, um, people interested in writing and then mags uh margaret ann suggs is doing a master class for children's books uh illustrating yeah 
Yeah, and Margaret Anne, Margaret Anne is a, a tutor. She's a lecturer in Ballyfermot. Um, she set up the illustration course in Ballyfermot and I have listened to her teach, like yourself, Ashwin, I know you're teaching illustration, but she is a terrific teacher. And Sarah Moore Fitzgerald is also doing a, a writing masterclass and she is a creative writing teacher and lecturer in the University of Limerick. So these are some really experienced teachers. I'm going to be sitting into as many of those masterclasses as I can as well. <laughs> you always learn something new. You do, you do, yeah. Um... For me, I think that uh, I'm, you stole my ones, Ash, and I'm really looking forward to the master classes. Um, and and anyone who's been listening to the podcast regularly will know I've been recommending the particular master class that maybe for each episode, like for the picture book episode, I recommended the illustration and the writing picture books. Uh, there's the one with Mary Murphy, who's doing illustrating and writing picture books. Um, mm -hmm. I'm personally going to make sure I'm going to be involved somehow in Eve in Eve's master class and writing books with the. Uh, magic and time travel and stuff like that i'm really interested in that um but we also have the the showcases that are happening as well yeah so uh, they're new and they're yeah. also free because we wanted to make them really accessible to everyone and there's one for teachers which you are <laughs> hosting i believe connor yes yes that's that's not terrifying or scary at all <laughs> <laughs> so you have some terrific uh, writers on your night and just looking at dave mccullough the new politics book that was highly recommended on the Ryan Tuppity show. You have Neve Sharkey. You have Ashim McGann. Judy Kirk to uh, Eight One, which I'm hosting. And we have Paddy Donnelly and uh, Titania Feeney, all kinds of people. Julian Goff, I love the rabbit and hair stories. Um, David King, it is uh, a hug for you, his new book. And then there is the other showcase, which is Eight Plus, which has some amazing people like Eric McGann and Paul Rick Kenny. So, and Paul Howard, that should be a funny one. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So yeah, yeah, loads and loads, loads and loads um, in the showcases. We're kind of cramming in <laughs> lots yeah. of different voices. Yeah. Well, I lots saw the list of the authors in, one... <laughs> in all the showcases and I saw they were only an hour. I was there going, <gasps> <laughs> how, how are we going to get through <laughs> so if you're going to that I, if you're going to other showcases I highly recommend you come with a pen and paper to write down all the ones you really really want <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah. Um, so that's Wonderfest is this week as uh, our listeners will know and it's we're very excited but what are both of you hoping for Wonderfest for the future um, and I know we're probably very much blinkered right now and making sure this year is <laughs> well um, but you know, let's just take a step out of the moment for a second, look forward and think, what would both of you think, what, what would both of you like Wonderfest to become? Well, I would definitely like for people to remember last year and this year's festival as festivals that happened in a very particular time mm -hmm. when, uh, you know, to, during the lockdowns, although luckily we're out of those now. Um, going forwards, I think the Inspire events are an area I'm very interested in kind of sharing the joy of children's books and the wonder of it with grown-ups who are kind of the gatekeepers to children's books mm. for children and young people, you know. Um, so we'll see. It'll be interesting. And I'm very much interested in reaching out to the wider Irish population, the global Irish you know, last year we had quite a few people tuning in from Brussels, from France, um, from all kinds of places. And I think that is a real growth area for us, you know, um, spreading the word of amazing Irish children's books further afield. Um, there are two areas I'm really interested in. What about you, Ashwin? What do you think? One, what, what, what do you think of think, Wonderfest's um, potential Wonderfest to grow? And what kind of things do you think incredible potential. I mean, the it's kind of future. traction it's got in such a strange time as well um, has just set it up in such a great way. Um, it's built credibility with the community of artists and uh, writers in Ireland, but then it's also building in and working in collaboration with lots of different people. And I think that's been a really uh, important aspect of it. And so for the future, I, I think Wonderfest can become the go-to festival for children's books in Ireland. Um, and because we're primarily an online festival, the 
Ireland to the world, you know, basically, and celebrate the amazing Irish artists and uh, writers. Yeah. And I, the other thing is the Inspire section. I think it's so important to be um, educating the future generation um, on how they can build their careers. There's so much we can pick up online, but then there is the business aspect that's never really spoken of. And having the ability to uh, teach them how to build a career that is sustainable um, is so exciting to me. Yeah. yeah, that's a great point, Ashwin. Yeah. Um, so we're going to have to start wrapping up soon. The podcast is nearly over and not just this episode, but the Wonder Pod <laughs> season of 2021 is nearly over too. Um, I'll be sad to see it go. But uh, I do have a couple of random the questions I've been asking at the end of mo for most of my guests for, uh, so far. So the first is when both of you started out um, in your author illustrator career, Ashwin, in your author slash teacher slash festival organizer slash general cheerleader career Sarah <laughs> <laughs> um, what's one thing that you know now that you wish that someone took you aside and told you then when you were just starting out it's an interesting question because I think you almost have to make the mistakes to make it all worthwhile and to learn so I started off in children's books very young so I was only in my mid twenties when I started publishing and getting involved with Children's Books Ireland. Um, so I learned a lot very, very quickly. Um, I'm not sure there is anything I, I wish I'd known, Connor, because I think if I'd known more, I wouldn't have jumped in with both feet and just, <laughs> you know, made the glorious mistakes, but also made a lot of things happen as well, you know? So I don't know. It's a good question, but I can't think of anything I wish I'd known. And I was glad, I, I'm glad I just jumped in with both feet and just did it, got on with it. I know, I think that's a really fair answer. I think <laughs> I think what you're basically saying is you have no regrets, essentially. No, and, um, I, I think Sarah's <laughs> making a fantastic <laughs> point there. To is like anybody wanting to <laughs> get you, into Connor. this industry, you have um, to remember, don't be afraid to make mistakes because that's the only way you're going to be able to grow um, and learn what you actually are good at, what you can achieve, because through uh, each mistake, it propels you into the next opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. So we're just going to celebrate and, uh, mistakes. I suppose for myself, celebrate the other the things that Fine. I think is really <laughs> important to learn um, is to separate yourself from your work. Okay. This is so essential for both artists and uh, writers because um, often the thinking is that if, I mean, we put so much into our art, into our writing, that it becomes our baby. And then any criticism is like a dagger to the heart. And so learning to say, you know, I am valuable outside of my work. And if my work fails, that's okay. It doesn't say anything about me as a person. And by creating the separation and learning to uh, value yourself outside of your work yeah. will make for a very productive artist slash illustrator slash uh, writer, you know? <laughs> um, Ashwin, are you spying on me by any chance? Um, and I asked that because this very day, I actually got a rejection from an agent that I was really hoping to work with. But I had, like, because I've been in this sphere in Wonderfest, I, did, I didn't take it to heart. I was very like, oh, yeah. this agent isn't for me. Um, but that's absolutely fine. And the way I looked at it was, well, I'm one step closer to finding the agent who will take me on or who will enjoy your work. And I think that's the thing is, like you just said, it. if someone doesn't take on your illustrations or your uh, picture book or your middle grade fantasy, whatever, it's that I, I they're think not taking the on. The other thing to realize like, is, yeah. you know, this personal. is a business. Yeah. Yeah. Like Absolutely. children's book industry is a business. So a lot of the times it's not personal. It's it's business decision. Mm -hmm. And uh, for young or, or 
new artists trying to break in, it's a question of risk mm-hmm. mitigation, you know? So you are the riskiest option if you're the new thing out there because they are they have to invest money in you to uh, ensure that your book does yeah. well. And they want to take the least risky option because that's what's going to be most profitable for them. Mm-hmm. But shiny new ideas are, are always wonderful to publishers, to agents, to editors. So hang in there, Connor. Uh, shiny new ideas are wonderful. So you just need to find lots of them. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, so quick, my quick fire questions. So don't think about these last few questions too deeply because um, <laughs> I'm sure we're, we're all very busy and we have to get back to working on the actual festival itself because it's starting soon, guys. Um, so first name a book that both of you wish, uh, that Sarah, you had wished you had written and Ashwin that you wish you had written or that you would wish you had illustrated. Oh, well, one of the greatest books I think in, in the children's book world is, um, Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak. I think it's extraordinary. There's no word out of place. And I know how much work went into crafting that book. Um, I think it's an extraordinary I could book write, and the illustrations uh, are out of this an world. epic fantasy yeah. like Harry Potter Ashwin. that 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 would be next level you know because that 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 book took me through school because <laughs> like I was in a boarding school and <laughs> Harry and me were the same age uh when the books came out so yeah. like I grew up with him uh he kept me sustained in boarding school <laughs> yeah wow Uh, that's lovely um yeah no i'm the same i was the same i was i I think i was a month or two older than harry the whole every time a book came out i was like boo we are 17 now Uh, (laughs) um if you had to choose between uh sarah for you between reading or writing and atom for you between reading or writing or illustrating um if you have to choose one what and why that's a really difficult one um because for me they're very intertwined you know um I don't know and it's how I express myself by writing so the difference is you know expressing myself or entering magical worlds every day um I read at least twice a day I don't know Connor I I can't I can't what makes me choose I think you're the I only give up, person. I give up so me. many other, so many other things, but no, don't make me choose. <laughs> <laughs> you're the only one who's protested oh. to make a decision. So fair yeah, play, there. Well that's really <laughs> tough for me. Uh, uh, Ashwin, are you gonna? Like, are you gonna? Have to, are you gonna choose again? Like Sarah said, illustration for me is how I express I myself. But then, <laughs> books are what sustain you through um, difficult times. They open new worlds for you. They reveal knowledge, uh, which then allow you to express yourself so they're so intermingled uh i don't know i'd i'd find it very hard to have one without the other (laughs) sorry connor not answering your question it's all right if it was gonna happen it had to happen in the final episode so i'm happy it didn't happen to open to now um and then my last question for both of you and then we're gonna say our goodbyes and good looks is um what's the one children's book from when you were, well, not necessarily from when you were a child, from when you were a child or as an adult that had the biggest impact on you. Uh, not necessarily your favorite, you know, the one that stuck with you for one reason or another. Well, mine is, and always will be, Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret by Judy Bloom. Um, it's an extraordinary book. I read it at least every year. And it reminds me what it's like to be a young person and all those hopes and dreams and worries and fears and oh Judy Bloom is just extraordinary and I read it when I was um, a teenager and I just love it it's for the me book it's of my heart. the love, Narnia love, love series so by my choice. Um, and choice. I think there's just such deep themes that he tackles that um, have always personally hit me and uh, talked about how I relate to the world there's moral issues he tackles as well and so that's been a real compass type of book for me yeah 
Uh, what about you, Connor? What's your all-time favorite children's book? Ooh, um, for me, it'd be uh, the Dark Materials trilogy by Philip Pullman. Mm. So that's yeah. Northern Lights, Subtle Knife, Amber Spyglass. Um, mm. They really, I don't, I don't really know what it was that that did it, but it was. Um, it was the, the those that, those that series of books has a very complicated relationship with um, religion and and organized religion in particular and um, children and guilt and all, all these different themes and I think I just read them at the right age and mm. uh, they're one I I don't reread books very often for some reason it's just not it's not the kind of person I am and I know lots of people do and that's the only series of books I have reread multiple times at different <laughs> stages in my life um but yeah there you go and no one never asked me a question on this show that was nice <laughs> i got to talk about me for a second <laughs> all right connor before we go can i just uh give a little name call of, of all the people involved in the wonderfest team I was going um, to ask you to do it anyway, so there you go. Oh, thank you, Connor. So there is lovely Mary Murphy, Eve McDonnell, Alan Nolan, Alan O'Rourke, Ashwin, who we have here with us this evening, uh, yourself, obviously, Dawn, uh, Dawn Nolan, uh, Margaret Ann Suggs, Marianne McShane, Marianne Nicobon, uh, Trish Ford, Trisha Ford, Ruth Ennis, our fantastic social media person, uh, Sinead O'Hart, Tara, Trish, other Trish, Trish Hennessy, uh, Una Woods, and Paddy Donnelly. So a right fantastic team of wonderful people. And then, of course, the lovely volunteers. So thank you so much to each and every one of them. They all worked so hard to get us to this stage and are really excited to have the festival starting on Wednesday. Yes. Um, so Ashwin, Sarah, the three of us have lots to do because as Sarah just said, <laughs> starting Wednesday so we might just go and do that now and uh, thank you so much for taking some time out to chat to me and to tell all our listeners all about Wonderfest how it got started and everything and uh, I can't wait for all the events so uh, see you soon <laughs> thank you Connor happy Wonderfest everyone <laughs>
but of course just being an extra person to talk to about the show when we were developing it and coming up with the idea um having an extra brain there to listen to me ramble and to offer feedback was beyond valuable and this podcast is as much hers as it is mine but finally i have one more thanks to give and that is to you the amazing listeners out there who have been here for the brilliant nine episodes we have had so thank you so much for listening thank you so much for being part of this wonderful festival even if it's just through this podcast and be sure to check out the festival itself this week so for the last time in 2021 i'll see you all oh i was gonna say see you all next week so no i'll see you all this week at the festival bye Thanks for listening. I hope you found this as useful, as inspiring as I did. Don't forget that Wonderfest is happening from the 17th to the 21st of November 2021. Head over to wonderfest.ie to find out how else you can have a whale of a time. See you there.